Mm-hmm. Crazy Nuts 10 minutes or less. I'm Jonas. No, PNT 9. I might explode someone. Let's start the timer. But ding. TNT. Yeah. USA Mullet Championships. Oh, hell yeah. I'm game. Let's go. Uh, you can go to mulletchamp.com. Okay. And uh, you can vote for. I can vote on a mullet. Yes. There... What I find very creepily, though, is they have a kids category and a teens category, but I don't really see an adults category. So are they exploiting children with mullets? I, I hope so. But uh, but I do want to, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think we should bring up mulletchant.com because mullet. some of the names of the people and the mullets are glorious. Okay. I'm bringing it up right now myself. Yeah, um, yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> the, the logo, oh on point. God. It's beautiful. It is. It really is. Dude, it's a... Big USA with like a Randy Randy Macho Man Johnny Savage. Yep. Uh, have you okay? Have you noticed? I don't know yeah. if you've noticed. I notice when I go to the gym a lot. Pe- there's a lot of people with mullets. Like people are just letting their <laughs> they're, like they're just letting their hair grow and then they're shaving the side short. That's like it seems to be like a new trend. I see it all over the place. I mean, have you noticed that? We are in Texas, man. But it's like, but they don't have the full flowing mullet in the back. They just have it's just longer. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. are you mulleting? What are you doing? Oh, uh, this this young lady with a mullet actually kind of hot. Yeah. She oh, under oh, the picture. It. Yeah. Like, Welcome to the epic a year of epic competition. I like how the guys with a mullet are all wearing like those sunglasses, like uh, that Facebook dads wear when they're talking about it, how they uh, don't understand how January six was a problem from the <laughs> from their Ford F two fifties. Right, they're wearing well, no sunglasses. You know this has been about. updated uh, mm-hmm. because now there is a men's and a women's category too. Before it was just kids and teens. Oh, but dude. If you click, like, I, like it was. Hey, what do you want me to do? I'm not kicking on the kids. It category. was only the kids before. So let's go to like, yeah. Do, I want to look at the female. Yeah, mullets. yeah. Can I look exactly. at the female mullets? Yeah, like uh, Dude, Cassidy, Cassidy Jensen. She's on top of my Micah list. Micah Myers cough. This Jenna Raymond does not have a mullet. That is not a mullet in my book. I mean, yeah. neither is Micah's either. Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, we can't spend much time talking about the people because no one can see this. <laughs> Dude, look at Mad Dog. Her name is Mad Dog. This is great. Michelle Mad Dog Durbin. This is great. I, and I was disappointed because, like, I feel like Austin should have a mullet championship. What? Because I would go. I have you definitely have seen mullet, in though. years past, Austin has beard competitions. Do they? Yeah, and they, like, they, and, like, I don't know when the next one is, but I, they, before COVID, they definitely had them. And I was like, I want to go. And just because, okay, the type of people who go. join a beard competition and go yeah. to join, they're going to be unique individuals, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, You're going to run into those guys who like collect vintage, uh, vintage household effects. Like they have like 1970s furniture and, and uh, appliances and a car and everything. They're like, this is my KitchenAid mixer from 1973. It's <laughs> olive green. Right. And I drive around in a hearse and it has a pull out uh, Warhammer table in the back. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> a pull out Warhammer table. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just saying, I mean, that's the type of person who goes I'm to not, beard competitions. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> that's definitely um, what you're going to run into. I do have to say that I, even when I was a child, never had a mullet. Uh, my okay. mom did give me a really weird bowl cut, homegrown haircut sort of look. Where like, like a bowl cut? Well, it was, kind of, it was weird. Like, it was like, it kind of had bangs in the front, but like my mom did it. So it was like, I have a, I, I have seen a school picture that was on my grand. It like, it almost kind of like did like a wave, like, cause like my mom didn't oh, cut it even. Stuff? And it was long on the side. It was Ooh. weird. Dude. It, was, it was like, it was kind of like a bowl cut, but not really. Like and some I, My Chemical Romance. No, it wasn't quite even. Emo. It was like oh, I don't know how to describe bad. <laughs> I don't know. It was just like it was just like mom was high and the she most, was like, most, I'm gonna cut your hair. The most interesting haircut I ever had, I had a mohawk for like uh I think like a week or two. It was weird. I had grown my hair out and I used to get it straightened all the time, but I had my hair's like super thick. So when it would straighten, it would just kinda like I would part it now in the middle, and it just looked like I had like wings on the top of my head or <laughs> horns. Sometimes I could like fashion them okay, into horns right, if I had right. some some grease or some hair. Gel How or tall something. was your mohawk? 
Uh, I would say my mohawk was about three, four inches high. Oh, okay. So nothing like super crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy, but it was, it's, I mean, it was still, it constantly. Was it a mohawk. true mohawk or did you shape it like a faux hawk, like a comb? Like on, it was like kind of like a peak. It was like, uh, well, I mean, I have black hair, so it was like they just shaved off everything except for a strip. Oh, down gotcha. the center. It okay. was more like a Mr. T. Oh, Mr. Mohawk. Okay, Mr. T. Like but, uh, you okay. know, not. Yeah, well, no, it was about Mr. T. It was a little bit higher than Mr. T. Okay. So. All right. Like, yeah. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, Do people even know who Mr. T is anymore? I don't think I don't so. know. Google, he, I pity the fool who doesn't know who Mr. <laughs> T is. I don't even know, like, how he became famous. Uh, he just like he just said, "I pity the fool and wore a ton of gold chains." Yeah, and he was he was interesting. He was entertaining. I guess he was fun to look at. He was fun to hear talk. Back in the eighties, I guess there weren't as many unique folks. So yeah. like anyone who was outside the norm, like was super like, "Oh, look at that!" Like Boy George and Mister T. And, uh, yeah, like they're like. Except back then, it was like, "Oh, look at that Boy George." I I don't like him, but I don't know why. That's <laughs> it was that in, that internalized like questionable hate that you had yeah. for someone. You're like, I hate that guy. Uh, you know, like honestly, I remember thinking back to like Little Richard and Boy George. Like they're obviously before our time. George Michael, yeah. George Michael. It was like they were gay. Nobody said anything about it, and it was just like, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, I think George Michael's where that if you only have your right ear pierced. Your gay thing came from in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, Remember back in the day, it was like which ears he got, like because I think George Michael had just one ear pierce and it was the right Is one. That and where was, that came from? I'm pretty sure. Or All maybe right. he like he started living the stereotype, maybe because he was gay and that was the thing. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. but like, but there's that whole it's that whole thing about like before the LGBTQ plus community has has like become more of like normalized and forefront, you know, everyone always tried to hide it, but yeah. give you a signal that you were it. Like they'd have that thing where like you wear certain, um, handkerchiefs and certain colors mean certain things. And okay. Oh, well, look, then I, I gotta make a, I gotta make an argument here then. Okay. What go. the hell was Aerosmith doing back in the day in the crying, crazy, loving an elevator to welcome to the gym? What the hell were they doing? Because I remember watching them as a young, young, young dynamite junior. Yeah. And I was like, these guys are gay as hell. And he was slaying the P he was slaying the P. But I mean, George Michaels was slanging. I mean, it's George the, well, Michaels was slanging. Well, we that were uh, we're talking about the P that ends in a Y, not a P that ends with an S. When it comes, yeah, to yeah, yeah, obviously. Different George P's. Michael was slanging the P with an S. Steven Tyler was slanging the P with a Y. Well, Steven Tyler doesn't have a P with a Y. He has a P with an S. But no, but that's what. No, I mean, not slanging. He was he was getting it. Uh, okay, Steven well, yeah. Tyler was okay, like, that's fair. but. Back then was when they all those underage girls were running around like, and they were just like, <laughs> like there's rumors about Aeros all those like you know the really? winger she's only seventeen like there's some real wild accusations from back in that day about like uh, who they were like they would have like questionably aged women that would just like yeah. tour with them for long periods of time their family would no, just be like that's, that's, take little Sarah on the road with you it's Steven that's, Tyler that's their muse their muse <laughs> she comes around she rolls the weed and she you know she just she, keeps everybody she, she stimulates their creative juices yeah, for, for yeah. and she just wears a bikini while she does it yeah dude she's not dad's okay with it dad dad <laughs> sold her to Steven Tyler <laughs> oh like, my god dude it's just it is just a wild Old, uh, yeah. uh, well, hopefully they didn't videotape it like R. Kelly. Oh wow! Yeah, they, well, good thing camcorders weren't as wi wildly available back then. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, man, it's a uh, it was a weird time back then in the eighties. <laughs> Definitely was, man. I I still just can't get over the fact it feels to me like being gay was more acceptable then than it is now. Of course, like I was too young, we were too yeah. young, I should say. So maybe we didn't see. <clears throat> the pushback on it as much and i'm sure you know like i know for a fact that gay kids got treated differently in high school then than i feel like they do now like oh they, absolutely it's definitely more well, acceptable now well we had i mean we went to high school together that's no secret um and there was a lot of kids in our school that people thought were gay but they never came out until after high school and i don't yeah. blame them yeah, no, I mean, we didn't, I mean, we didn't have a small high school, but we didn't have a giant. We we weren't Everybody one of those knew like each other. <clears throat> there isn't. One, we didn't go to a high school that was like you have people in your first period class, and then you never see them for like the whole rest of the school day sort yeah, of stuff. Like yeah. you, you, you know, it was it was enough that you 
you had different classes with different people, but not, I know some people go to schools where there's like each grade level has 2000 students and yeah, you're like, yeah. we're not, no, no but, way you could ever know everybody's name. But I feel like back then we knew at least like 70% of the people. You kind of knew who everyone was, but yeah. you may not, yeah, but like, but yeah, like, so like for a kid to come out and be like, I'm gay and be isolated as the only gay dude in our high school. Yeah. That's, that's weird for them, you know? Yeah. Like, so they waited, but, but I feel like, yeah, it was my, my mom, she used to know a lady who worked at, there was a pizza shop up at the corner. And so she would go up there and we'd hang out with her sometimes while she was working and talk to her and stuff. And I was friends with her kid. And there was this guy who went up there and he was, and he was a gay dude. And, uh, and this was like in probably late eighties, early nineties. Right. Okay, okay. And, and, but and my mom, my mom, my parents, thank, thank the Lord. were always super accepting for like races, sexuality types, whatever. And I, and thinking back, I wonder if like that helped set my mindset where I'm like, I don't give a crap what any, because my parents were super accepting and I, and I had experienced like, you know, our high I mean, school is sure. pretty diverse as far as like black and white and Hispanic and yeah, like, yeah. and my parents had friends and like, and gay friends and you know so i was around all these different cultures and stuff where i know some people are just like they're like i didn't see somebody that wasn't white till i was like 25 years old because my whole yeah. my whole area was completely white you i know, mean or, but even that even if you aren't like immersed in a culture or a uh, orientation or whatever i don't feel like that's immediately gonna make you hate that would make you apprehensive maybe but racism or like uh sexism or ableism and it's all like that's taught that's something yeah. that you get from your environment other people tell you that teach you it's okay to say f slurs and yeah and, you're, you're not and wrong. then you're just like oh it's okay you're, you're not wrong and then you're like yeah. ew you this and then it's like <laughs> you know and, it's, and you and your friends are just doing it in, in jest or whatever but it becomes a part of your yeah yeah absolutely so anyways that's all the time we have today's episode go to the crazy for jonas tnt oh yeah